Welcome to the sixth installment of the Heroes Journal podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm Nick. And today we actually have a really fun episode. It's going to be a fun, it's pretty structured, which is nice. Yeah. Um, so if you enjoy structure, you're going to like this one. These questions come from our Saturday morning live stream that we do. It is exclusive. Wait, is it exclusive? It's not exclusive. It's not exclusive. We just do it on Facebook. Kyle and I have been going live for... Um, a long time now, probably like yeah. four months. I think our first Facebook live stream was in March. Yeah. And we, yeah, we, we started going live on Instagram yeah. back like last November. Yeah. So it's, we're, I, we had our year anniversary. We missed it of our first No, live I don't stream. think we started live. Anyway, the, we started streaming because we were packing journals and we were like not doing anything else. And we were like, we should just live stream this and see what happens. And then like yeah. people ask a few questions. You start to get to know people. Uh, now months later, like... We have this community of people that watch our live streams. Yeah, somewhere between like 15 and 30 people will yeah. come. And, and it's usually, it's it's very similar. People will come through and we have like, we kind of have our live stream friends that we chat with. Um, yeah, it's nothing but, huge, but it's just something we enjoy. It's like, I mean, if, you, if you're looking at like a business scenario, it's the best way to talk to your customers. Like, yeah. Um, but I mean, for us, I, I don't think it's like, I don't know. It's not market research. I think yeah. for us, we just genuinely enjoy mm -hmm. hanging out with yeah. people that we enjoy spending time with. So it's something that we do every Saturday and someone asked us some really good questions. Good enough to make it onto the podcast. Yeah. yeah. So just a little context. We, every, every little while we will have someone new come into the live stream and they'll say something. They're like, Hey, I'm new. And they'll ask some questions. Um, on Saturday, someone named Tiffany uh, came in and started asking us some really thoughtful questions. And then one of our longtime heroes someone who if you look at some of our other youtube videos they always ask really thoughtful or have really thoughtful comments to say on our videos and stuff like that so tanya comes in with the last question but the first three are from tiffany last one's from tanya cool. and yeah i think it'll just be good um we answer these questions live on facebook and i think they were thought-provoking enough that at least I, we've been thinking about them since yeah so we wanted to kind of give it a little bit more of a teased out answer and a little bit more depth to these questions. I think there's a lot here. So um, I have them on my phone. I'm going to read them to Nick, hear his thoughts, hear my thoughts. We'll go from there. It's kind of the general format. Cool. Um, cool. So just so you guys see how, like, I copied and pasted them. Hello. I recently got the Heroes Journal. I would like to know your guys' story and the story behind the journal. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that was that was the intro. Just, that was the intro? Yeah. So if, let's say that this is, you're talking to Tiffany directly right now. Just okay. kind of give the rundown. Give the synopsis you're, of what you You're think. Tiffany in this. I'm scenario. Tiffany, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, this could probably be its own podcast, uh, but the quick version is the idea came from uh, me. I was at my desk job using a different goal setting journal. Um and it was probably two, two thirds of the way through it. So pretty far into it. It was about the same length as what we have now. And I just looked up at myself and I realized I was organized, but I was uninspired. And I had just finished watching Lord of the Rings, you know, the night before I had finished it. I was very like, you know, riding the high of that epic adventure. Then I go into my desk, you know, my, my, my desk job, right? Sitting there with my boring planner. And I'm just like, is there a way to carry this inspiration into this um, part of my life that is kind of mundane by nature? Um, and so I threw in a couple ideas. Uh, the one I kind of landed on was like trying to shove a three act structure into my daily life. Right. So, you know, waking up and like going somewhere and then coming home. Like that's like a very simple act structure. So long story short, I went, I went home at the time I was living with Kyle. Um, that's you, Tiffany or whatever yeah. is happening. Um, and then uh, pitched, him in the, pitched him the idea. You know, if you have a friend, you probably know that at some point in most friendships, some kind of business idea gets pitched. And, um, you know, our, our friendship is no different. There's a, there's a bunch of yeah. business. This was not the first business pitch. No. By not, any stretch of the imagination. Exactly. In fact, I kind of said it to Kyle sort of like, I don't want to say it as a joke. I wasn't really taking it very seriously. I was kind of just like, this is a cool concept, isn't it? And Kyle was really the one that pushed things forward for me. He was kind of like, this is this makes a lot of sense to who you are, um, and you have to do this. Like you have to see it through. 
kind of in this interesting way. Like it, it, it'll, it'll eat you from the inside out if, if you don't like see this thing come to fruition. So a little foreshadowing for cost of inaction. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Exactly. So um, really quick, who are you before this? Who was, who was Nick? Delara, before you had this idea, like what was it? Give, give a little bit of background on yourself. Um, well, I was, I graduated uh, college here in Seattle in 2016 and was kind of working a few different jobs here. Um, we're in Seattle, so there's no shortage of like tech startups here and there. I worked at a few startups. Um, you know, never really found stuff I was like truly passionate what about. Kind of work? Uh, so I, I went into recruiting. So I was doing technical recruiting at an agency and then I did some software sales. Again, lots of tech here in Seattle. And then I worked at a startup um, in Redmond, which is outside of Seattle for another two years, um, you know, doing more recruiting stuff. So I kind of went like back and forth between recruiting um, and obviously, you know, was having a hard time like finding my place and figuring out what I wanted to do. Um, I think I was kind of, you could probably attest to this, but I was kind of like looking for something else. I think that was like truly interesting to me and, and all that stuff. Um, I have a list in my head of the things that you pitched me, like a couple of them that weren't the hero's journal. Do you have any that you remember of ideas no. that maybe you no, don't, I don't. Oh, interesting. What are they? Um, the big one really early on was you wanted to be a Twitch streamer. You yeah. Wa- you wanted, you really badly wanted to. Yeah. Like jump in on, well, because we had a very unique like angle on the whole like League of Legends thing, right? We were going to yeah, play. Yeah, Khan and I love to play League of Legends or most video games together. Yeah. And I was trying to rope him into like a live streaming scenario and yeah. it just was like. Well, we, we, first weird. of all, we didn't have the equipment. Our yeah. computers couldn't handle um, streaming video streaming and video. playing League of, League of Legends at the same time. Um, oh, I do remember. I think I pitched you an ebook. I was like, let's, did. let's write an ebook. Yeah. And you were like, that's a bad idea. It was, it was kind of exciting, but it was like, because we were going to write like League of Legends lore. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to write fan fiction. Fan fiction. <laughs> How did we get here? I guess it's not a far cry away. It's not a far cry away, but it was definitely like there was, there was these things where you were trying to find a way to make money off things you liked. That was, yeah. that's what it was. I think if you were to break yes. it down, that's all, yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. I had this like insatiable, like need to have a side hustle or some kind of project outside of my like working yeah. hours. Um, but most of the ideas were a lot more based on like money um, than they were passion, if that makes sense. And so I think I'd come to you and pitch like, dude, we can make like, we can make like this much a week or this much a month. Um, but, the, but the journal was, was I think probably one of the more convincing ideas that I came to you and I was like, this is something I'm really passionate about. And I think is a really cool idea. It wasn't just like, here's the upside, the, here's the money making opportunity. You know, it was like something that had a little more substance to it. Yeah. I, um, for those of you who want, who want like an inside look at Nick, Nick is a shopper. Uh, not necessarily someone who spends a lot of money on things, but when you do spend money on things, you've, you've deeply researched everything that you want to use in your yeah. life. Um, so I knew this was going to be something different than like a money making opportunity because you came at me more like my life is I want something in my life. You never you didn't come to me like, hey, man, we can make thirty dollars a week. And that's another right. reason why I was interested. I was I was interested because I didn't was like, I don't care. Um, all the and, it, and granted at the time of my life, a little bit more about me. I was still in college. Um, I it was like the most stressful time of my life, too. I was like, I think I had three jobs. Yep. I was getting my master's your master's and I was a track and field athlete at Northwest. Yeah. So yeah, I was just like, all of these ideas were like, okay, I have to, I'm going to make 50 bucks a week. Right. Like I'm already tired. I don't want to do more things than I'm already doing. Mm -hmm. But this one, I mean, though all it did come at the tail end of all of my responsibilities. I I had just finished, I just graduated. Um, I had left the, some of those jobs and so on and so forth, but it was, it was that it was like, okay, this, this work is going to be more of like, can I start a company? Can I create a product? Yeah. What does that look like? What does that feel like? What's that experience? So that's why I was able to come around a lot more was because it wasn't a money making opportunity. I couldn't, I couldn't care less about making 50 bucks a week at that point. That, that's a good point. It, it definitely started from a, like this doesn't already exist in the world kind of perspective. Like I did shop for something like that for a long time. I didn't really, I think I thought it was a cool idea, but I didn't want to make it. I just wanted to use it which is, I think is actually still true to this day. Still a very important point, but um, 
Uh, but anyway, yeah. So I, I convinced Kyle to do that right before he moved to Arizona to yeah. work uh, for a company down there. Um, so we were long distance, like building it like from yeah. scratch. So like we would, you know, have conversations every day after we both got off work. Um, a couple months after that, we hired Ryan remotely. Yeah. So he's our artist for the journal. I want to say this really quick. Yeah. That, that experience hiring Ryan, I was thankful for your experience in recruiting. Because you've you done a little bit of, it wasn't the same kind of recruiting at um, your last job. Right. But it was just, you, you very clearly put together a job description that people were excited about. Yeah. There were a lot of applicants. You were, you were, the phone screens were very like, you were on, you're very on point with those. So I would say that your experience, though you weren't necessarily excited about the work you had done up until that point, really did cater and, and helped us prepare for that moment. It did, which I think is something that we don't really highlight very often. But it was a pretty cool to see that that skill set turn into ultimately building a really great relationship with Ryan and getting yeah. us to where we're at where we are now. Yeah, we lucked out uh, with Ryan. We definitely had some other candidates that I think were experienced and interesting, but Ryan sent us like the best best application that we ever could have asked for, and we're still working with him, which I think is evidence yeah. that we picked the right person. We need to ask him. We need to like publish that somewhere and just show show everyone his his resume. Oh, I want to frame it here. Yeah, it'd be so great. It's like, because it's art, it's like, I don't know, we have to frame it. It's like one of my favorite things. Anyway, so we hire Ryan, uh, which was definitely a big like crossing the threshold moment for us, because that meant for us, we were going to start spending money, like real money on getting someone to build something that no one had bought yet. Right. So we weren't like, you know, we didn't have a lot of money to our names. We're just out of college, just working our first jobs, essentially um, just trying to live. You know, Seattle isn't cheap. And so trying to scrounge some money to make something to then fundraise for <laughs> on a Kickstarter uh, is pretty, pretty difficult. So anyway, so about 10 months uh, is what it took to develop the journal. Um, everything from like writing the, co- the intro content to getting the, the concept hammered out to getting the art right. Um, there was like so many things to talk about and to, and to kind of like sift through. Um, but long story short, we launched a Kickstarter February 5th of 2019. Um, Kyle was still in Arizona. I was, you know, in, in, in Seattle and it got funded. And um, shortly after Kyle decided to like move back, um, I ended up getting him a job at the job I was working at. Um, sort of knowing that like we were going to be able to work on the journal together while we were at work. Uh, <laughs> not like exclusively. We still, no, yeah, like, not we exclusively. Still worked, but I, I guess I yeah. think that we both realized like this thing has a shot. It has a chance to be something, but not yet. Like we're not ready to quit our jobs and go full time into it yet necessarily. Um, so working together for, you know what, like, uh, nine months. N- about nine months still getting paid, but still doing it on the side and slowly growing. It was like a really, really important chapter of the story. I would say like if you had just moved back from like Arizona and I quit my job, it would have been like, it would have been next to impossible uh, for the journal to survive. So I think we did a good job of like riding the fence, you know, for as long as we could. Anyway, we quit our jobs um, in G- uh, February, kind of a year anniversary of the Kickstarter. In a way. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, because February first was like our first day of yeah. journal full time work, which was terrifying. Talk about that. Yeah, talk about that chapter. Do you remember that? Like coming downstairs <laughs> on February first. Yeah, yeah. I I would say that there are moments in this journey that our backgrounds have have helped us in like the creation of this product and this in helping form the hero journal as like a company company. Right. But there are moments that we were not prepared for. And that was one of those moments. I think that there's no way to prepare. And I, we're getting a little way from the the question, but I think it's really important there. There was no possible way to prepare for what it would feel like to work full time on your own thing and to really be out on your own. And not just from like a fear standpoint of like, am I going to be able to make money? But it's like, am I going to be productive? Am I going to do the right things every single day? Am I going to move the needle in a way that's beneficial to the the whole company as a whole? Um, And I think that you and I had a lot of anxiety about that. We didn't, we had a lot of imposter syndrome. Am I good? Am I good enough at managing to manage myself? Right. Um, 
It yeah, was so a lot of a lot of feelings and like sleepless nights were were well, like the first two months, I would say. And then obviously the the, the pandemic happened, so that was like another yeah. reason to lose sleep. So <laughs> it was it was a lot. It, it was it hard a yeah. couple months. L- looking back on it, I just remember like February first and the in that first couple of days of that week coming out of my room looking at you and just being like did you sleep last night <laughs> i was like nope <laughs> yeah um and i don't know i i'm someone who's been you know like i i've never really messed with like anxiety or depression all all that much um so, and it was the first time in my life i felt i really felt this like anxiety that like my heart was racing um yeah like the excitement cuz you know cuz here's the thing like everyone always talks about like quitting your job there's like this weird like corporate fantasy where it's like, oh, I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to do my own thing, make my own hours. I'm my own boss. You know, like I'm going to I'm going to make the rules myself. Um, it's true in some sense, but there's a whole aspect they're leaving out, which is like when you work at a job, they tell you what to do. They tell you what measures success. They tell you, you know, what you're doing correctly. When you quit and you're trying to make your own thing, no one tells you you're doing a good job like you don't really know what the right lever to pull is all the time, especially when you're starting out and you're also abandoning like the safety of an income and benefits and, and all that jazz. But anyway, we're getting way in the weeds. Um, that's how the journal got started. We, it's been about a year since then and we've grown it, uh, quite a bit. We moved into like a headquarters where we ship journals out of, uh, this is like our YouTube studio. We live here as well. So, uh, then we hired a few people, yeah. And um, so, yeah, so things have gone really well despite the pandemic. I think we're really proud of that. But um, here we are. That's cool. That's how we got here. So now that's a little bit of who we are and how the journal came to be. The next question is actually, it's more personal than it is journal. Um, still journal related, obviously. But many journal, how many journals have you guys personally gone through? I think ours is almost the same answer. I think you've gone a little, you've gone through a little bit more, probably pages total than I have. But yeah, I'm like one and a half. Yeah, full disclosure, like we, although we created the journal and we do use a journal, we're not the best journalers. Yeah, I try to not. Yeah, like, um, I mean, you're on a streak right now. Well, you know, I don't want to brag. You're on like what, like a 30, 40 day streak right now? Something like that. Yeah, I haven't counted. That's pretty good. Yeah, but I mean, what I'm trying to say (laughs) is we didn't make the journal because we were expert journalers and the journal doesn't come off. Um, like a drill sergeant, right? It comes off like a, like a friend. That's what we wanted. In fact, there's a scene in one of the Harry Potter movies where it's like um, Harry's in this house and it's all like destroyed and Dumbledore shows up and he like cleans it by saying a spell. Everything that kind of like cleans itself up, it like reverses. And then he looks at Harry and he goes, that was fun. You know? And I was like, I was like, man, if we could just, ca- if we could get the journal to capture that uh, persona, like that vibe of like, I'm not a drill sergeant. I'm not here to like shame you because your life is a mess. I'm just here to help you organize a few things and like help you have a little bit of fun along the way. Yeah. And I think that um, the journal and like our user stories with it have kind of reflected that in a lot yeah. of ways. There's people that use the hero's journal in the hero's quarters and beyond that have completed like twice as many, if not more journals than we have. They have them on their shelves. They yeah. like have collected them. They're way more organized. Um, but that's not really, really the point. Like the, the, the like Kyle said, I, I have it. I have a long streak right now of like daily pages and that has never happened in my entire life with yeah. any journal um, ever. And I'm not going to say that it's like, because I made this journal that like, that's how I was able to do it. But I mean, the truth is, is like the journal that we created helped me, become more consistent in my own life. Um, so anyway, I guess my answer to the question is uh, I'm almost finished with my second journal. My first journal took me a year, one year to complete. And I'm actually really proud of it. Like it's, it's, I'm actually more proud of that journal than the one I'm about to finish. The one I'm about to finish took me about four or five months. Um, but the first one has such a story in it. It's like even the blank, you know, even the, the, the gaps of like months where I didn't write in it or something. Uh, even the days where I only wrote in the date and I like scribble in some notes or something, those are so valuable to me. They tell a story, even like the way my handwriting looks. I'm like, Oh, I could tell what I was feeling like on that day. 
Um, so that's why I love keeping them. That's why I love finishing the journal, even if it's taking forever. Um, not the best journal user. Currently doing a lot more consistently than I than I have been. Which colors? Uh, I did a red first edition, so there's no um, foiling on the spine, which is a bummer because it's in my slipcase. I don't know. Actually, that, that kind of tells a story too. That's true. Yeah. Good point. Uh, and I'm just finishing up a Wildwood Green. You know what I just yeah. thought of just now? What? I didn't even finish our prototype. It was 10 pages. I don't think I finished it either. <laughs> right? It was It was just because our, our original version, the Kickstarter version that we made, had five different pages. Yep. And we did two of each. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't even finish that. That's, yeah. Isn't that funny? It is kind of like, I don't know about, I, I, I feel like I've gotten way better at journaling as yeah. we've like done this. I think that that's actually kind of fun. Like it's, it's fun to know that like, even though we're the makers of the journal, we're not the best at using it. Yeah. And there's still like a lot of room to grow and, but it is important that I think, and I think everyone, um, at least at the heroes quarters, like uses the journal. You know, I, I always imagine us like having, like, can you imagine a day where there's like a hundred employees and there's just like five or 10 minutes in the morning where everyone's just doing their journal. We're like, yeah, like this is five or 10 minutes that we set aside every day for you to like open up your hero's journal, get organized for the day, get like your to-do list to seize the day out and, and do them. I don't know. I think that that's kind of a, a cute thing. That's um, it's a little foreshadowing for the last question. Ooh. We'll move on to the next question. Do you have any advice for new heroes starting on their journey? Asked Tiffany. There was... Um there were some really good answers in, in the live stream yeah. on this. Um, so if you're out there watching and you you have some time on a Saturday morning, people yeah. in the live stream are way more insightful than we are. So, well, yeah, that. I mean, so here's the thing. It's one thing for me to give someone advice when they start a journal because I make it. It's another thing for strangers who don't know this person, but still use a journal and have no affiliation with us to give them like meaningful insight. Right. So, um, you know, if I were to give a piece of advice for anyone starting the hero's journal, I would say, um, yeah, don't make it a chore. Don't make it a, um, shameful thing. Um, you should think of your journal like a way to organize your day and put a smile on your face. Um, when you sit down with your journal, you should try your hardest to make it feel like you're sitting down with a friend, not with the drill sergeant. And, um, you know, there's kind of two different users that we find. There's people who know exactly what they're trying to accomplish when they, when they buy the journal, maybe they saw an advertisement for it and they're like, Oh, that would go great for this thing I want to do. Then there's other people that I think just like the concept, they buy a journal, they open it up and then their eyes get really big and they get overwhelmed. I mean, the journal is really beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes people can like um, become afraid to kind of write in it because of that. Um, so, if you are the latter, if you don't know what your, if you have no idea what your quest is going to be, and you don't know how to start. My best advice to you is literally skip over the intro content and just start using the daily pages, write in the date, write what you are trying to accomplish that day, write down some notes, what your schedule is going to be, write down what you're grateful for, write down, you know, what the allies and the threats are versus the things that you're trying to get done. What's going to help you. What's going to hurt you do that for a couple of days. And I guarantee you, your, your quest will become known. Like, I think a lot of people get stuck in like, oh, I have to fit into this like quest narrative right away. It's not true. Just get organized, get on the road as it were. And um, a lot of the times like that path will become clear. Um, yeah. In the shameless plug, we also have videos on our YouTube channel that will talk about starting a journal and talk about some of the, the specific spots in the journal and on the daily pages that you can maybe get some inspiration from. So if you want us to go check that out, maybe, I don't know. So it's true. It and this is kind of a, here's, here's a bonus tidbit. I will say, this is like a little more nuanced. If you are someone that, um, has set a lot of goals and has not had a lot of follow through, you know, like a, a dreamer, a visionary, if you will, it may benefit you to actually start with the fear setting portion of your journal. Sometimes it's beneficial to list out the things that you're afraid that will happen um, in your life if you don't do the things you want to do. Sometimes it is helpful to look at uh, or to assess the risk of, of not going on a journey, of not going um, on a quest. Um, I don't know. That's, it's, 
sometimes we get, we, the, the goal setting community gets so in love with like, Ooh, I'm going to plan out this and that. And sometimes we just need to take a step back and say, what are the mission critical things to do? And what is the, what is the worst thing that will happen if I don't get those things done? So I don't know. I don't want to be like, I don't want to come with like a shame based approach, but there is people that are kind of like overly goal setting and need maybe like just a more reality check. Yeah. And if you are like a visionary and you're having a hard time making these things concrete, um, that's where an ally comes in. I would say that though Nick and I both have our visionary moments, I tend to be more on the concrete and he tends to be more on the visionary side. So there were literally times where he would call me and he would just be like, tell me what to do today. Not not because he didn't know what to do or not, not because I knew everything that needed to get done. He just needed someone to tell him what to do because yeah. that, that took all the pressure off. And all now all you had to do was the thing. And reality is like there was one day where I, I was just like, write down everything you want this journal to be. Yeah. And he spent like three hours from the night from the from like eleven PM to three two AM or whatever it was and wrote out everything. And it was it was that moment of having an ally to tell him, just like, hey, just like get your thoughts on paper. Yeah. Um, that made it like a little less scary. So if that's that's also a little piece of advice is maybe uh consult someone. I, you start start using your journal, you have these big plans for it. And you're having a really hard time bringing things into reality. Maybe there's someone out there that can help you. So I think that's the ally part of it as well. Yeah. Um, that I think is really cool. Cool. And this is our last question from Tiffany. Then we'll go to Tanya's question to wrap up. Cool. Tiffany asks, what is the biggest challenge you guys face as small business owners and with the journal? Um our, our arms for our podcast are old. That's the biggest challenge, I think. No, um, you know, I think I said this on the live. Maybe I can try and articulate it a little better. So there's, you know, any small business owner will, there will always hit this point um, when you're trying to grow something, right? The, the nature of a small business is um, if it's doing well, you know, you have more demand, you want to bring on more help to uh, account for that demand, right? So maybe you run like an Etsy store, right? And you make jewelry. And then all of a sudden, like your jewelry gets passed around and word of mouth maybe, or maybe there's like an article written about you. Now all of a sudden, like a lot more people want your jewelry. So many that you can't make the jewelry fast enough. So you got to bring someone else on, right? Um, and maybe they help you make the jewelry or maybe they help you with the orders, whatever it is. Um, there will be a point in that story where the person who started this jewelry business, I guess that's the example we're going with. Yeah, really confusing choice. Sorry. Um, I'm just, I'm trying to break this down in the simplest terms. Th there's a point in almost any small business model where the person who started the thing and was doing everything for that business will have to start to back off and kind of become an operator of the, of each activity in the business, right? So in our context, at the beginning, right, like we are writing the emails, we're writing the content, we are basically, you know, we're, we're packing all the journals, we're driving them to the post office, like you're doing everything um, outside of like making the art, maybe, because Ryan's doing that. So um, we're still like talking to Ryan about like themes and we're talking, we're doing right. feedback. So even, even you know, there's a lot more involvement in that process as well. Yeah. In and, the beginning. And the point I'm trying to get to is, I, at least for me, one of the hardest things that we've had to deal with as a small business is growing to a point. And luckily, we haven't had this unnatural, crazy growth. Um, but just scaling into a place where we have multiple parties helping us with different aspects of the business. So that means, A, like we don't touch every part of the business anymore. And, and B, like you have to trust your people uh, that like things are going to get done. So like, in short, like the hardest part of, for me right now, of running a small business is like being more of a manager of people, more of an operator to make sure things get done, more of like a project manager, if you will, than like someone who's like in the game, like doing all the things. And that transition for any small business owner is really, really hard because it's, it's like a different personality. You go from being this like go-getter, like I'm going to do everything. I'm going to stay up till three writing like our intro content Two, like I have to take care of myself. I have to take care of the business and I have to take care of these people working for me and I have to like care for them. 
and make sure that they love working on this with me and that they're, that they're feeling fulfilled and that they're having a good time, you know, um, among so many other things within the business having to go right. So I think it's really that transition from the star player to like the coach. Um, that's really, it's just difficult. You have to change your personality in, in a lot of ways, you know? Yeah. That's my, I think that's my side of it. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with most of that. Um, I'd probably agree with all of that as my thing. But I, th- I think that one of the things that I'm specifically trying to figure out right now, it's been very difficult um, just because it's not who it's not me. Like I'm trying to figure out this thing for other people, but it's talking to people that we work with and getting a gauge of, of how they're inspired because when you work with people and they're able to work out of their own inspiration for projects or for their vision on things, it ends up being a better thing, right? There are, there are plenty of times where we've had long message starts with Ryan talking about the ending of a journal or the art on a specific page or whatever it is. And there's kind of this back and forth of like, okay, what is like, what is the the true inspiration behind wanting it to to sound this way Mm. or going this way? And how can I provide feedback to Ryan in a way that he's going to, that's going to make sense to him and and you're going to ultimately make him excited about working on some of these changes or the future part of the journal. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's not just managing people in a way that's like organized, but also trying to find out how to speak to someone's inspiration and speak to someone's true desire as to why they're there. And it's really, it's, it's like a fun problem. It's a fun, not a problem. It's not even a problem at all, but it's like a fun uh, question to try to answer because that just means you get to know the people you work with. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I'm very fortunate that everyone I work with is people that I already knew. Um, we, we didn't have the, the, the budget to, hire a headhunter and, and go find people it was, it was more just like yeah we're the headhunters yeah i mean my brother i get to work with my brother yeah. and i have about 25 experience 25 years of experience of knowing him and then um zach went, we went to college with zach so yeah. we already kind of had a general idea a little bit of a head start but um yeah it's just, it's kind of fun to to learn more about people and how they work and what they're inspired what inspires them um yeah yeah i don't know if that so, makes any sense but it's a challenge because so. it's, it's not easy to, to get all that stuff. You have to genuinely get to know someone. Yeah. I mean, we're, and we're small enough, right. Where it's kind of like, it's kind of a two way street in the sense of, you know, if someone's working here with us right now, it's, we're so small that they definitely have to be here for a reason. They definitely have to be here for an obviously inspired reason. We haven't hit like a point yet with our, you know, company and, and, and with the amount of people that we have working here, where it's hard to tell why someone's here or, you know, where it's hard to tell if someone's passionate about being here because like no one's, no one can fake it at this point. It's too small. <laughs> I'm knocking on too many doors and being like, Hey, yeah, can everyone you help me out here really everyone. fast. Yeah. <laughs> There's too much of that for people to be, um, to be able to hide from that yeah, particular thing. Not that, you know, anyway, so you I, I definitely agree with the sentiment that like the more, um, the more ideas and the more concepts and the more perspectives that you might have on how something can be better, whether it's the actual product, whether it's something with the brand, something with our operations, something with our warehouse, whatever it is, just having more um, people dedicated to those particular departments makes the business as a whole a lot better. And that's something you don't get when you try to be the star player of all these things, mm-hmm. right? Like if you try and do that forever. You actually end up limiting the potential of a lot of these different segments of your business a lot of times not really realizing it, you know, you might be working your, your tail off thinking that like, Oh, this is what the business needs right now. Mm-hmm. When in reality, it's like, no, you need someone else to be fully dedicated to that thing. So yeah. Anyway, that was a really good segue, but I'm going to ruin it because I have two things that I just thought of. Okay. So Anthony, so Anthony is one of my best friends since fourth grade and he had a quick break from work and we needed some help in the warehouse. So it's kind of this like this perfect situation as we went through the holidays. Yeah. He's pretty much made our warehouse a well-oiled machine in the last two months. Big shout outs to him. Um, and it, there's this funny place now where he's learned enough about how to pull up all the orders, how to get the orders right, all the stuff, how to pack it to the point where I'll go in there and I'll start packing with him. He's like, this isn't your job. This is my job. You need to leave. Yeah. And it's, it's actually like a really big lesson of him realizing and me realizing and 
working together like this is not the best use of your time. Mm-hmm. This this is why I'm here. This is why you are paying me to be here is so that I can do this this work. Don't like get in the way, pretty much. And yeah. it was like that was like my biggest lesson as a manager. It's you you bring people on to do something specific. Right. Let them do the thing they're here to do. Right. Yeah, it's so weird. It's like you learn for two years, like you're running it on the side, and you and you have to learn how to build this business on your own. And then you spend the next like two years, once you finally quit your day job to go do it, you have to unlearn doing it yourself. Like it's it's the funniest, like I don't know, it's the funniest kind of shift in the tide, but yeah, you you said that really well. Gotcha. Yeah. That was that was that was good. So this is our segue. This is our last one. Last, last question. question. This one comes from Tanya. Um, Tanya always has such good thoughts and questions for us. Yeah. So thoughtful. She comments on a lot of our YouTube. Yeah. And stuff. There's, it's always really great. It's always great. She's so wise. So wise. Yeah. And this is, and this question is no shortage of that. Has mm-hmm. no shortage of wisdom. We've never been asked this question before. How big do you want to grow? And are you willing to accept the downsides of that? Or do you have a certain goal where you feel the business is good? It's a weird question because you take you take two sides of it, right? So you have, you have you have the customer side of it and you have the business side of it. I don't think any business for the sake of the business would ever would ever be mad about growing, right? That's the like the goal of business. Like a goal of a business is to make money. Yeah. In general. Like that's like obviously goal like businesses have mission statements and they have goals and they set out to do bigger things. But for a business to stay in business, you have to make money. Just you know what I mean? It's like Yeah. So but even like when people are like Nonprofits don't make money. It's like, yes, they yeah. do. They still have to make enough money to pay the people that work there, <laughs> right. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we probably operate closer to being a more of a nonprofit than we do of like a, <laughs> yeah, a, like a Amazon. But, right. um, yeah, it's an interesting question because you don't actually think about it. And I think we we answered it in the live stream, obviously. But I've been thinking about it nonstop for like the last two days. I don't know about you, but I don't want to hear your thoughts, kind of as you've been able to resonate on it for a little bit. It's a hard question to answer um, simply, but I mean, I, I guess I'll try and give my best shot at it. I, I think I, I would like to grow as, as big as possible without losing who we are. That's kind of my, my bumper sticker answer. Um, like, especially because the question did come at a time where we were doing a live stream, basically with what you could say are like our most engaged uh, most excited like heroes like th- these are people that yeah i know th- these are these are uh, individuals who have like invested their saturday morning to like spend time with us um there isn't a lot of companies that are like i think engaging their their customers like that so these you know these uh, individuals are so so important right and so anyway when that, when that question came in it was like i think the real question was like are you gonna like sell out like, is there, is there a point where you trade the big bucks for these personal connections that you have with people? Um, and to your, to your initial kind of like, um, prologue to the conversation, like, uh, yeah, I think businesses do want to grow as big as they possibly can. And I think in our particular case, like our mission isn't to sell journals to people. Our mission is to help people become the hero of their story. That's what we're all about. And it would be, wrong to to run a business like this and not want as many people as possible to become the hero of their story um but there's definitely this delicate balance of like growing at a natural rate maintaining those the 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 relationships and the person um the person to person relationship of the heroes in our you know in our kind of in, in the quarters you know and growing right like i i always think about these um there's just a lot of businesses, right? And the internet has kind of made it very easy to to start a business, right? But there is something that the internet can't take care of. Easy is kind of a relative, relative term as well. Yeah, sorry. There's, there's, there are definitely growing pains I think for every business. What I mean to say is the barrier of entry is smaller. It's still difficult, but like you don't have to go to the bank and get a loan these days, you know, whereas I think you used to have to do that in any case. I guess what I'm trying to say is that like while the internet and while the, um, the speed of the modern day that we live in, um, can account and take care of a lot of things that traditionally businesses struggle to take care of easily. It can never account for knowing the first name of 50 of your customers off the top of your head, you know, like knowing the story of like individuals that come to our live stream every weekend, um, 
Like those are relationships that we have and, you know, sales numbers aside, growing the business aside, those relationships are so important um, that to trade them for a bunch of profit or, you know, some kind of great opportunity, I think would be a huge mistake. Um, and so that's kind of an elaboration on the answer. But basically, I would like to grow the Hero's Journal as big as possible to help as many people become the hero of their story without losing who we are as like a as a business. So that's a good answer. Yeah. What, 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 are your, what are your thoughts on it? I would agree with that answer, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think that's something that you and I share from a kind of like a, a pathos standpoint. The reason why we're even here, I mean, if, if there was ever a moment where either of us were like, let's just get stupid wealthy, I don't think that person would probably still be here because it's not the best way to do that. Right. Um, there are definitely more profitable endeavors um, out there. But so that's, I guess that's the, that's the, that's the part that I, I gen- genuinely agree with is like um, the numbers behind a dollar sign aren't nearly as important as like, I like to pull the number of journals we've, we've sent out in the world. I love, I love making a, a heat map of seeing where all the journals are in America and seeing that there's one in every state, which I think is like an incredible feel. That is really cool. Yeah. Um, I, I love, I love doing the, the first last name check in my head of like how many, how many customers can I, can I think about right now? And like, no, and even know about like a little bit about their story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm excited. I think next week's podcast, we're going to read a uh, story from one of our heroes. Uh, Neela sent us an email. I don't know if you saw it, no. but gave us a little bit of rundown of their experience. With oh, the that's right. Yeah. 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 So I, I want, I want to run through that next week and kind of just, dude, I would love that. Yeah. I would love if every podcast, I mean, yeah. not the whole podcast, but if we could dedicate a portion of it to like reading the story of someone who became the hero of yeah. their own story. Exactly. That's like my dream. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry, I don't want to interrupt your answer. Yeah. And I think that as we, as we grow and as we continue to uh, iterate on our product, we, it's more important to us to see a number of journals finished or number of stories told, if you will. And getting a, a running number of that and being able to celebrate with people, being able to um, not more, more is not the, the right word, but like being able to, to recognize like, oh, we had maybe we had made a moment of failure and we're able to like be there and work with people. So it's getting to a size where that's impossible seems, seems counterintuitive to our mission. Right. Um, yeah. Now, I, I do believe that as we grow, there are things that we hold to be sacred as a company. I would say that Saturday morning live streams at this very moment are very sacred to us Mm -hmm. because that's our, that's our only opportunity every week just to talk, just to talk to people. Yeah. Um, We did that when there were seven people and now there's like 30, there could be like a hundred who knows, but it's extremely important to us that that is something that continues. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that size is, it's, it's a, it's a great, it's a great question um, from like a operational, like how many employees, right? You had, you had mentioned like, I would love to see a hundred employees all working on their journal. That'd be yeah. really cool. But that, that's, that would never happen um, at the price of losing who we like, who we want, what we want to do in the world. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, we don't want to be the, the journal brand that has journals everywhere because it's like a cool thing to have a journal. Like we we're I don't think we've ever wanted to be the the journal company that people just start their journal and they never finish them. Yeah, we're way more interested, especially as we grow, in seeing like, and seeing and and not just seeing but celebrating people when they cross the finish line. It's like we don't want to be the journal that just like you know gets you in the door and then burns you. We're like we have outro content and and like future journals because like we're not a like we we believe in stories here and we yeah. believe that a story with a good beginning deserves a good ending. And it's a tragedy when stories like don't end well, when movies don't end well, when books don't end well after they started strong. And so like, yeah. it's, it's not just like a, a cool idea. It's like a fill of philosophy that we've adopted and kind of injected into the productivity journal um, I, idea. And so, and yeah. So like I just, you know, to grow big, right. We would have to get, we would sell a lot of journals, but I think really in our mind to be successful, we would have to have a lot of journals completed and more, more importantly, more emails like Neela's, like m- more emails where people are like, this thing changed my life. This thing helped me like get back on track. This thing helped me lose weight. This thing helped me, you know, get a certification or save money or write a novel or, or whatever. Like, Or 
my life is exactly the same as it was when I started, but I feel better about my day. Yeah. Right. That's like, even that is, even is that's a huge, huge win. Exactly. Yeah. Like I, I think a, a real goal for us is like that someone could finish a, a hero's journal and, and feel the same. Like we never want that to be the case. Like at a minimum having a, a journal that they filled out for three months is a massive accomplishment in their life. Even if nothing really changed. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, you can, you can, you can take this now as a, either a verbal, if you're listening to this on wherever you listen to podcasts or if you're watching this on YouTube, this is like a verbal commitment from Nick and I that our mission is to help people finish journals. And we're out here to hear more about your stories and to celebrate with you or to hit the drawing board on how to make things better. Uh, so that is what we're here to do. Uh, we, yeah. I, we're, we're vowing to not grow too big where we can't do that anymore. Uh, cause that would, that would be the definition of turning into something you hate. So becoming the villain. Yeah. Living exactly. long enough to see yourself become the villain. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is fun. Like I actually really like the question, you know, having questions format. So if you guys have like burning questions or things that you think would be interesting for us to talk about or tackle, uh, you know, throw them in the comments. We'd love to see yeah. like what we could tackle. And, um, and if you have a story, if like, if you're using the hero's journal currently, or you finished a journal in the past, um, like I want to know your story. I want to know what actually happened because I think that we want to start sharing more more stories on here. Yeah. So so if if you have a story, you can email it to us at hello at theheroesjournal.co. We will have that in the descriptions as well, so that'll be there. Yeah. And yeah, if you could put in the subject line, just put like hero story or yeah. something along those lines, so we can make sure that we know what it is. Um, that'd be great. It's true. But until then. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. We uh, post content like this every week. We have some fandom videos where Zach talks about the maybe more nuanced uh, parts of fandoms and fiction that we all just look past. Yep. And we also do a series called Inside Look at the Heroes Headquarters, where we talk about our lives. We show different spots of our headquarters and talk about what they mean to us and what we're doing to grow and be better at what we're, what we're trying to do. So yeah, go ahead and subscribe. You can like this video if you'd like. And uh, I guess we'll see you next week. Yeah, I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening.